my first couple of years of teaching, um, the beginning days of school, what I would do is do some icebreaker activities, be at the, the door when my students entered, make sure I was greeting them. And we just have some nice time together, like an hour or two, where we kind of get to know each other, build those relationships. And then by the time recess had, had you know, come upon the class, they would go for recess, we'd come back, and then we'd start saying, okay, here's what we're doing this year, here's the focus, here's all these things that we need to go, and we just started to get into the work. And I thought that was what we should be doing. And I, I probably did that because as a student, that was kind of the experience I had as a kid in classrooms that, you know, you kind of do this thing and you repeat it and then you get to work because there's so much curriculum you got to get through. There's so much stuff that has to be done in the school year that every moment seems to count. And as I grew in my career and had wonderful leaders, one of the things that changed in my practice was I would spend a good chunk of my day, if not the entire day, sometimes we would spend the whole week, depending on the school that I worked at, building those relationships with kids, whether it was having an empty room, a, basically a blank canvas where we would decorate the classroom together because then it actually became the student's classroom, not just mine, but our, our community's classroom. And you could see the representation. It wouldn't look as good as when I would, you know, decorate it myself. And sometimes, to be honest with you, it looked way better. But it, it was more it was more connected to the people in that room, not just the teacher. And why this is really important is because I felt that if I didn't get to work right away, that we were going to lose time. And as I've grown, what I realized is that investment of time that's so important. Being able to really know who my students were, understand them, build that connection where there is that trust. And I've mentioned this book, and I, I mentioned this in this podcast coming up. Um, it's Stephen Covey's The Speed of Trust. And the whole premise of the book, very simply, is the more we build a relationship, the quicker we can get things done. And so, yeah, I didn't spend as much time going through curriculum, going through objectives you know, throughout the year on that first day, even that first week, because I knew we could get done things faster, because less classroom management time, less time, you know, kids not really knowing if they if I, if they like me or not and if they had a relationship and that that element so that's a really important aspect and the reason i bring this up is i had a great conversation with dr eddie alderetti he's the acting superintendent in edison township school district and i have the the opportunity to um, address their staff for the very first time ever uh, from from at least what i've been told in their school district history where they're bringing everyone together and what I appreciate about the conversation with, with Eddie is that he knows how important it is to bring people together, to have that, that opportunity to sell, not just you know set the tone for the year, but really celebrate the incredible staff, the incredible people in that school district and build that relationship to let them know their impact. And the hope is that relationship built on that day permeates throughout the school district. So I, I really loved talking to Eddie. He's a great personality wonderful person. I'm so excited to join Edison Township School District. And just that reminder that I had as I was talking to him about how we build those relationships is an investment that we get back tenfold and how powerful that is. So I know you're going to love this podcast. I know you're going to love talking to Eddie. And for those Edison Township School District, when I'm joining you, I'm so looking forward to connecting with you. I cannot wait to meet you all in person. But everyone else, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Here. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoy this episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am very excited to have Dr. Eddie Alderetti from Edison Township School District. It is in New Jersey. I'm actually uh, joining you all coming up, you know, at the beginning of the school year, their convocation. I'm I'm so excited about it because uh, as we were talking, uh, you told me it's the first time we've all you've all been together. So big pressure on me, and hopefully the issue I cause is like, what are we going to do next year? That's what I'm hoping to cause for you. So uh, I am so pumped to have you on. We just had a great conversation. I hope you'll check that out if you if you didn't miss it. But uh, Eddie's been a teacher. He's been a principal, head of HR. He's currently the acting superintendent in, in Edison Township School District. So. Eddie, thanks for being on the podcast, taking time out of your, uh, I don't know if you're on, like if you're on vacation or you're supposed to yeah. be, I don't know. Do you get yeah. vacations? Is that a thing? 
We, I get vacation days. Yeah. You know, uh, what's, what's, what's tough right now is right. So in, in, in my, in my role, I, I can't take too much time off because right. I, you know, there's, we've got so many moving parts right here. So, uh, you know, I'll try to do long weekends here. They'll do like a Friday and a Monday, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe get some golf in, spend some time at home. But, uh, you know, the summer, it, listen, it, it's more about planning for, for what's, what's going forward for, for next year. So, Oh, I love that. And, and Eddie, if you can just kind of like you're acting superintendent now, I don't know how long you've been in Edison or how long you've been there. So can you just kind of fill us in? Like, what are you doing today? And like, how did you get there? How did you get to to do in the role that you're doing currently? Yeah. So my, my path here was, I was a, you know, I was a building principal um, over in Freehold Township for, for 14 years. Uh, wonderful school district, West Freehold School. And, uh, you know, co- you know, the pandemic kind of hit. And, you know, at that time, uh, you know, just look for different opportunities to yeah. kind of affect the school district in a different way. The the human resources position popped up here and the superintendent at the time told me, hey, listen, I, I think you'd be a great fit. You know, mm. you, you you do well with people. You are a building principal. You understand how to talk with teachers. The contract stuff, you know, is, is contract language. And, you know, you'll, you'll figure it out. You know, I came in the midst of, of you know, on the tail end of re, uh, the beginning of yeah. reopening and then closing again and... You know, it was a traumatic time, right? Yeah. So I, I was on the phone with a lot of people and, and it really helped me build relationships here initially. Uh, and then, um, you know, uh, there was a transition in, in leadership. The Board of Education appointed me in December. I, I've been here since 2020. Hmm. I've been acting superintendent for s- seven months now, I think. Yeah. About seven months. So, uh, yeah, it's it's great, and uh, you know, look, I, I learn something new each and every day, and, whether you want to or not. Eh? Yeah, whether I want to or not. And uh, look, I, I will say this, and I can't stress this enough: that the team that I have around me, uh, that assists me with my day to day, from any aspect, whether it's triaging major issues, whether it's curricular, whether it's technology, buildings and grounds, uh, school safety and security, special ed. I mean, we have. We have a, uh, a top-notch team in, in human resources. My secretarial staff, everybody here is just so supportive for me. I, I, I couldn't thank – I wouldn't have been successful, I believe. You know, I'm hoping I'm successful uh, yeah. but, uh, w- without their support. Well, I, you I, when we actually started the podcast, like before, you know, I always like to kind of talk with guests uh, ahead of time. And you just had – like it's, it's – uh, maybe I'm – it's graduation, right? You had your graduation ceremonies for your high school students. And you were, you came on, you were beaming about it. And I, and I love that. And did you get, did you get to address the students or like, so I did a speech. Yes. Yeah. And I, you know, you know, and, and George, you've spoken in front of tens of thousands of people, right? So yeah. you get energized. It's, it's cut, right. It's, 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 it's in your wheelhouse. Yeah. So I, I've spoken in front of people many yeah. times, yeah. but it's usually in an auditorium of about 1500. Right. It was about 10,000 people in there. I, right. I'll have to admit from, from, from probably the neck up, I looked calm and cool, knees down. <laughs> they were knocking a little bit there. But uh, I, I made sure that, that my message was, and again, you're addressing the students, right? So it's not, right. About, it's not about me. It's the building principal's day, first of all. It yeah. is the building principal is the star of that show along with the students. I am there to say, hey, Board of Education members, these students have met all the requirements. Right. Let's get up and throw our hats in the air, right? Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that my message was clear and, and concise, right? Reach for the stars. Think big. And you can do anything that you set your mind to, right? So something short, sweet, to the point that's motivational, and then exit stage left. So uh, right. yeah, it it's, was such a great event. You know, to be a part of something that big yeah. and grand, and and it's memorialized, right? Like they videotaped it. My mother was watching, and my wife. You know, they, they had a live stream. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Well, you know, and the, the thing I think sometimes we forget um, in education is that 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 graduation ceremony is sometimes kind of like a a high school event when it's an all of us event, right? Like it's, it's a culmination of that preschool teacher, the kindergarten teacher, you know, all the, all the people that all the things, but you know, the, the, the people at high school get to really celebrate it, but it is a celebration of everyone that helped those students along the way. And I I think that to me is that, that excitement, right. And it's, it must be really hard to kind of honor all of those people that have contributed to uh, the student success. And in our business, right, it is, it's the end result of our work product, right? Yeah. Like it, it's, yeah. this, this is, this is what we, parents, community members, this is what we have delivered, right? We have delivered wow. all of these students that are, 
you know, successful and, and, and on their, whatever, whatever path they choose, here yeah. we go. Right. We've got them to this point um, with everybody's support. And, and that's, listen, as long as you're, as long as you're consistent with that message, that it's a team approach yeah. and, and you're always working on culture, right? Cause that will always, you know, that surpasses everything. There's this, I don't, I don't know if you've ever seen this video and it's such a, you know, as I'm talking to you, it just popped in my mind. Uh, it was during, uh, you know, like COVID graduation where, you know, people weren't having ceremonies, you know, all together, but they were, you know, doing makeshift ceremonies. So it was like kids driving in cars and there's yes. this one ceremony of the kid and it's like, like it's elementary school teacher, high school teacher, you know, uh, uh, there's a police in the community, it's parents and they're all like, they all are sending messages as the kids kind of going, driving through the line. And it's just such a powerful video because it shows how many people, not just educators, but the, in the community help contribute to that kid's success. And you can, you can hear the mom crying the entire time, you know, just feeling the, the pride for her son. It's just such a powerful video. George, I, I was a part of it. It was actually my last piece. I, I did one of those. You, yeah. It's, it's like the one time that the teachers and the principal and, and, and everybody, the leaders can be rock stars, right? You're yeah. driving in this car yeah. parade. You, you got, you got stuff hanging from your car. It was, it, it is an awesome part. You know, it, it, it makes it all worthwhile it. in the end. Right. I it's, love just, it. it's the reason why we do it. So you, you went from, so you were like, you were a, uh, was an associate superintendent before, but like, was, I was like an, I was an HR, I was the human resources director, oh. kind of Jack of all trades. Again, ah. there was a, there was a couple pieces of, of the puzzle missing. So much like ah. the team does now I, I pitched in and we did everything. How was that transition when you went from that role to the superintendent role? Like what, what did you find? You know, what were some of the good things that, what are some of the struggles? Like what, what did you find is that, that transition from one job to another? Um, so for this role, I would say from a leadership perspective, this was more of my wheelhouse. If, yeah. if I'm saying I was more comfortable in, in the superintendency role for a couple of reasons. I, um, I, I think I'm pretty good with operations and how to lead processes and, and, and involve everybody in, in, in a conversation. I, I always under, uh, under, uh, operate under the impression that uh, I'm, I'm never the smartest person in the room and I need to, mm -hmm. I need to talk with all of the experts of each of the department in order to make an informed decision, right? At the same time, I understand from this role, setting clear expectations and what, what our mission is moving forward, whether it's short-term or long-term goals and having everybody buy into that. So that part, I think I was very, very comfortable with. For me, the most difficult part was just the, the sheer, the size, right? 19 schools, yeah. 17,000 students. Wow. And how to make everybody not operate in silos. And, and that's mm. part of the reason why, why you're visiting us in September, right? Is that mm. the opportunity to get us together to have one message that is communicated at the same time to everybody and uh, to get us out of those that, you know, car, it's, it's easy to get lost in the day to day from one mm. end of town to the other. So I, I think for me, that was my biggest struggle. And that's why I, I really thought of this and, you know, with the board support, to be honest with you, because yeah. it's, you know, listen, it's got, it's got, it's got an impact on, you know, operations and day to day and PD, but you know, they're committed to this too. So, you know, uh, it, it's going to be great. I'm actually super love it. About it. Well, you know, and I, and I'm making an assumption here when I'm, when I'm saying this, cause just, just from some of the stuff we talked about in the podcast already, some of the stuff we talked about before, I, I didn't feel that, you went to Edison to eventually become the superintendent. It kind of no. seemed like you were like, Hey, I'm going to go, you know, do this job, HR. I want this. And this is something that I've really been focusing on and I've struggled with it in my past that sometimes you get a job as a stepping stone to the next job. Like you always kind of got your, and I, I feel like what you kind of proved is what I've been trying to really shape my mind in is that do what you're doing in the present, the best pot, the best you possibly can. And then opportunities then tend to present themselves like that kind of is like, as I'm listening to you and our conversation, it was just like, Oh, like what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, but but you were just focused on doing your job really well, yep. as opposed to like, Oh, I'm just eyeing that chair. Like, yep. you know, I think sometimes when you eye the chair, that's actually can be a detriment because you're not really doing what you're supposed to be doing as well as you should be. 
if I were to tell you that this, you know, when I, when I came here, that I thought this was my path, I would say, I would have told you, no, this was, right. it was, it was to build capacity and human resources, you know, and, and now that I'm, now that the opportunity has presented itself, I, yeah. like I said, I, I, it's a pleasure to come to work each and every single day. I it really it. is. And I'm fortunate. I'm fortunate. I love it. Eddie, you, Eddie, you're just, you're just mentioning this and we were talking a little bit. I know you touched a little bit about it. Uh, what I really appreciate is, so I'm doing, I think I have 30 or some of these opening days coming up and <laughs> this is, yours is a little bit different in the sense that most of them, they've been done year after year after year. They know exactly where they're going to be. They have their schedule and they're just kind of plugging me into the, the speaker slot, that kind of thing. But yeah, yeah, this is new. This is new to you. Like, you're like, where are we even doing? <laughs> like, you didn't yeah. know where, where you're doing this. You figured out all these logistics. So like, what was the, and I know you kind of touched on this kind of bringing everyone together. Like what, what it ultimately, what's the hope that as people walk out of there? And I guess this is kind of, we're, we're getting rid of a meeting by me getting this on the podcast right now. Cause you're going to, I'm going to ask you this anyway, Ab but yeah, what, yes. what did we hope when people walk out of there that day? Like what's the hope for that? My, my hope is, look, I, I think that we need to build relationships here, not not just amongst, you know, the hallways, your second grade teacher or, or among departments. Yeah. But Edison is one whole. Right. And establishing a culture and an environment that breeds success and, and having people enjoy coming to work every single day and and yeah. not being afraid to take risks right in their teaching or their work or whatever, they, or whatever they're doing. And knowing that we're here to support them, right? And to to get everybody together to talk about the future of Edison, right? You know, yeah. like like we said previously, one of the tenets of great leaders is that they they speak about what great things are to come. And yeah. the only way in my mind that we can do that effectively was to get them all together at first. And you're and you're right, George. I had no clue where I was going to do, I thought about a couple different places and they're like, Eddie, you know, we can fit half of the staff here right. you can do in the morning. I said, no, no, it has to be every member of our organization. Yeah. The buildings will be shut down. I want everyone there. So, uh, with a little help from, you know, from our team, mm -hmm. they found it and, uh, we, we knew, who, we knew the guy we wanted, right. We, we, knew, we knew who we wanted to kick off and, uh, and I, you know, like I said, I I think that this event will it's it's just going to set a positive tone for not only this year but for years to come. And uh, it, it should be a tradition that we celebrate. We should celebrate people's successes. We should celebrate longevity in the district. Mm -hmm. We should celebrate the acquiring of tenure because it's it it's yeah. tough to get in Edison. It's rigorous, and I, you know, like I said, I think the more that we do this. You, you, the more we'll build our brand, right? Mm -hmm. Celebrating sure. success, student and staff. The, the, when uh, the last school district I worked for, you know, on, uh, I guess, permanent, I don't know if that's would be the term. I remember it was Parkland School Division in Canada. And one of the things that I remember uh, one of my superintendents said is our goal from like these days is that you see that you identify yourself not as the school you work at, but you see yourself as part of the bigger picture. That yes. the stuff that you're doing in your grade one classroom in that school actually contributes to the, the success of the entire school division. And, and that what you're doing and how you share it with your colleagues amongst schools actually helps them help kids, which is the whole hope, right? And you know, we when we often switch schools, um, we're like, oh, we're gonna miss those kids. It's gonna be so hard. And then you go to a new school and then you realize, hey, here's kids that also need support. And like we, I, my whole goal is not to like crush kids in another community. It was right, right. Everywhere, right? <laughs> and so that, that was, that really resonated with me. The other thing too, is uh, something that, and I, I love that you said this because you could have easily said, Hey, we're going to do our, the, this support staff and our K to six <laughs> teachers or, you know, whatever. And then we're going to have our seven to 12. And then, and then, and then we get these like, Oh, like, you know, those high school teachers, they have it easy because they, they, they teach the same subject every, you know, four times a day or five times a day. And then you get high school teachers going, those elementary teachers have it so easy because they teach the same kids. <laughs> and then you, but then when you start connecting with one another, they start to realize, hey, some of the issues that we have are kind of similar. 
And some of the solutions that we have are kind of or similar and we can learn from each other, even though we're working with different grade levels, different content areas. And so I think sometimes when there is that division, it is actually a little bit created, right? Like because we, a lot of school districts I work with, they separate those groups. Yes. And they're like, why do they actually not look, you know, look fondly of each other. I'm like, because you're separating them. That's part of the reason, right? Like bring them together. So like, th is that kind of some of the focus that you had is like kind of in the value in one another? Absolutely. Because again, you, I, I could have, we could have recorded a zoom, right. And right. sent out this video and principals would show it in their libraries or in their cafeterias. And you know, this is, you know, right. Dr. Alderelli's message and, and George Kiros's message, but that that's the, we might as well just keep doing the same thing, right? It, right. it doesn't, it doesn't foster community. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't foster the opportunity for people to get together. And, and like you'd say, it, look, one of the things that you just said really resonated with me is the, the, the way teachers act and how they promote themselves, not only in their individual buildings, right? Mm -hmm. It contributes to the overall reputation of our district. Their yeah. hard work is the reason why we have such an outstanding reputation reputation they, they you know they don't worry about the superintendent or any you know they right. you know he's just the guy you know that does board meetings twice a month right you know often yeah. that's usually the case parents and everybody connects with their child's teacher so their work is the reason why our repu our, our schools have outstanding reputations yeah yeah okay and I, this might be a little controversial what i'm saying so hopefully i don't get uninvited for this portion <laughs> when i see when i see a teacher post this on their social media, on their profile, it says views do not represent my employer. I'm like, yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, they <probably> do. <laughs> Actually, right? they do. Because, because if you work with my kid, yeah. right. And whatever, like what you say, they, they do kind of represent your employer. Right. And it's kind of <laughs> understanding that. And it's not like you can't, like, when I say this, some people are like, well, can I have a private